So what's up guys, this is David aka Reverse Long and I'm here with Peche. We're at the US Bank Tower, 54th floor in Los Angeles. Um, this is a, we're gonna talk about trading in this podcast and we're gonna do another one um, later for Macro Driver. We talk about Peche's whole background of coming up from Venezuela and all that. So Peche and I came in contact from our friend Eduardo Diseño. Um, shout out to Eduardo. He's actually going to be here in L.A. in about a week or so That's right. to do an event uh, with Roland Wolf nearby in downtown. So it was really when Eduardo said he was coming to downtown L.A. at the what is it? The hotel over there? I forgot. The Ace Hotel. The Ace Hotel. So the, actually the meetup, the, the meetup is going to be at the Ace Hotel uh -huh. next Saturday at 6 p.m. Yeah. So. so when he said that, I was like, well, how does it, uh, Eduardo know about the Ace Hotel in Los Angeles? And I'm like, oh, I'm like. Ah, it's his friend from Had a local guy. Fish, of course. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's right. Because that's like a, that's like, that's like a. It is like a local gem. It is like a local gem. It's a local gem. Yeah, 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 for yeah. sure. Charlie Chaplin used to like go there all the time and all that Marilyn Monroe and stuff. Yeah, there's that big theater yeah, underneath, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, the, the Ace Hotel Theater. Um, yes. The, the United Artists Theater, that's, that's what it's called. That's right. Yeah, and it's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. I've, I've never seen it in person, but I've seen all the photos and videos. It's, yeah. it's great. So yeah, we did a podcast, whoever's been paying attention, we did a podcast, me, Peche, and Eduardo did a podcast. Mm -hmm. It must have been about a month ago. I think so. About a month. Yeah, that yeah. one came out great. Uh, there's like some reels on it that's really funny, you know? Uh, yeah. They, 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 <laughs> <laughs> like how yeah. do you stop the bleeding yeah. of your account? Yeah. With, uh, who did the reel? Who, who uh, edited it? Because I, I saw like the, I think the, it was, the sound was like the... The Ricky, really Ricky. You know, have you met Ricky? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I haven't Eduardo's cousin. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So there was like a funny kind of theme sound, like a you know you know the the, the instrumental in the background. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He added it. He yeah, added yeah. it. Yeah. They're really funny. So, um, but yeah. So this podcast, we're gonna talk about some trading stuff, how Pesha's trading is going, and Pesha, if you want to ask me whatever, you know. So we actually spent about like an hour or so or more in my office downstairs. Talking about trading like today, mm -hmm. or, you know, how trading the past couple of weeks and how trading is going in general since the last time, especially since we talked all, all three of us last time. So, um, so Peshe, what, what did you want to talk about first? What, any, any idea? I mean, I think what I have more relevant in my head right now about trading is market shift. You know, I think last couple of weeks with the whole AI yeah, uh, yeah. thing, everything was extremely volatile. Any name that had AI at the end, it's crazy. you could just buy it and close your eyes and it was just like, you know, go so, up. So market shift. So yeah, so this is the, the market is, is crazy. So like one week it's freaking volatile. The other week it's like vo kind of volatile, kind of not. Um, it just, there's all these cycles that come. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, and, and you see how a lot of the stocks that like, you know, they have this like parabolic move and then they just like fade and then they start to hold and then they squeeze and then they become this like massive yeah. squeeze the yeah. next, the week after, they, they don't squeeze. Yeah. And they, they, you know, they have the same move but then at the high of the day, they just start fading and they fade. Yeah. And then they, the people from the company realize this is not going to go anywhere and then they throw an offering like they did today ADTX, with ADTX. Yeah, exactly. So first the AI ones It's crazy. You know, I totally forgot about AI. We were talking downstairs um, that like I don't really have a memory anymore of like what I did the past three days ago, four days ago, which is I think is a, I think you, it's a good thing. You said that's good. And it's I was like, you know, it great. is good because that means like I used to when I first started out the first few couple of years, first three years, I have a really photographic memory from like my past career, especially architecture. Mm -hmm. And I would be almost like traumatized from trades and they would stay with me. But I noticed like when I forget about them, that's like healthier. You well, can live your life, you can it's, you, you can approach a trade like brand new again. I, I, I don't remember if it was like one of these two books or a mix of the two, I don't, I don't know. It was, I think I, I read, um, Atomic Habits and then uh -huh. Trading in the Zone back to back. And in, in between them two, I think Trading in the Zone says how new traders are on scarred and then they go with this, you know, fears to the market, which is which is great in a way, right? But then eventually, you know, they get scarred. 
Yeah. Because the market is the market. And... It might have been trading in the zone. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. Exactly. And then, you know, like, I think he, he does the analogy of, like, a dog being a grad. When you're a kid and you see a dog for the first time and you just have the concept of the dog, but you've never interacted with the dog. And then you see a wow, 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 wow. And then you want to interact with it. And if the dog is aggressive, you're scarred. The rest of your life, or at least for a while, you're going to think that dogs are a scary thing. Same can happen with stocks. Same can happen with, like, a specific uh, setup. And I think that forgetting about what happened is exactly... It's healthy. Getting, yeah. It's healthy. It's getting rid of that pre, yeah. you know, conception of, of what's going to happen. Because you never freaking know. So yeah. if you are on scarred and you're and you have bad memory, yeah. it's, it's it's great because yeah. you're you're gonna approach it like you were advising me today, tray by tray. Yeah, one tray at a time, one day at a time. Yeah. So but like, when you mentioned the AI, I had totally forgot, and I did okay with what AI. I did pretty, I did really pretty well. Um, but this week I did even better. So like I was so focused on the past couple of days on like what I traded, not so focused, but like this is what's what I remember because I traded like a lot of tickers this week that I forgot about what I traded last week even though last week was pretty good so like I don't even remember until you mentioned it I forgot about AI like G GFAI I and no when yeah when you when you mentioned it I was like oh yeah that's right but that's I right. totally forgot about it but yeah G now when you mentioned it then then I remember okay GFAI IDAI MRAI all the AI 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 yeah so it's anything that an AI yeah. uses to spy so so um <laughs> But see, everybody was buying AI last week, and then nobody's talking about AI this week. This is the market. This market is crazy. Like AI, AI, AI. Then all of a sudden, crickets. No, no AI. Yeah. Um, yeah, I shorted uh, a lot of all the AI ones. Ex yeah, me too, me too. Eventually, more AI, I, I D AI. I remember that one. So I, there was a lot of. We were talking about the sympathy plays. The sympathy yes. plays. Yes. When you when you have a whole sector moving like this. The sympathy plays are like the easier ones, in my opinion, right? You, Me too. Yeah. You catch the leader, and, and then one kind of lags. And then you mentioned uh, what, you saw one well, break off from the leader. GFAI yeah. bro broke off. You know, when yeah. AI faded, I was actually short on GFAI. I was like, oh, this is delayed. Yeah. <laughs> it was not yeah, delayed. Yeah, yeah. It started squeezing, and I flipped, you know. But yeah. I think that a couple of years ago, I would have. I would have stayed very stubborn because, you know, but, it, but see, that, it that, had to fade. That's good that you picked that up. You're like, because a lot of some traders, they don't want to admit that it broke off. Well, it was a liquidity trap. I remember because uh, it had actually it, it had, it was it was the same thing. It ramped up and it kind of like faded. It was very similar to ADTX. You know, and I, th I think it was similar to mm -hmm. ADTX. And then it started like not staying heavy, you know, and it, it didn't have a lot of volume. But you see, like, I didn't have a, a huge size, but even with not a huge size, I would, like, step on the on the bid to cover, and they, it wouldn't pick up the order. And I would, like, it would go a little higher, and I would, like, stay on the bid, and, like, nothing. And I was, like, and I was seeing the tape, and I was seeing, like, the chart, how it would, like, progressively grind up. And I was, like, this is a liquidity trap. This son of a bitch got me. Yeah. And I, I was I caught it at a, at a weird place also, you know, like I didn't didn't break my wrist or anything But it was like I was like it, it's time so, And so what was your overall take on what was going on? Were you bullish bearish? I was or... bearish because for me the leader was fading all the other ones were fading the other one that w the only one that was standing was GFAI so I wanted to fade it too but it didn't it it trapped and it actually finally squeezed and I got back in long well, like I, I got out and when it, when the squeeze happened I went in long like with like small size and it just became like a crazy thing so, so, so. you're so you're going long and short yeah I'm I'm, I'm, I, I'm flexible you know it so, depends so, on the, so let's talk about that because everyone knows uh, kind of not everyone knows but a lot of people that follow the they know I'm only short well the friendly bear the friendly bear makes so, sense so for you but I think it's really interesting okay so you you flip biases yes and you have no trouble with that well, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a, like, technically I'm not a profitable trader, so you could, you could. But, no, no, but I'm, what I'm saying is like when you go long, are you thinking, you're, is your mind bearish? You're like, is this, a, like, for example, you flip biases because you see the pattern go, uh, a squeeze happening or, uh -huh. and then, but is your mind thinking, this is a shit code, this is a shit code, this is a shit code. 
No. Oh, fuck, is this no. Shit cool? No, I see the squeeze. I see the people trapped, and I play that. You know, I play that the people are gonna cover when it goes back to the key level. Like if it's a it's if it's a good enough squeeze. For instance, this was a great squeeze because everything AI is fading and this one is not, and he's doing a liquidity trap. Everyone's trapped okay. to the neck, like for sure. So the, I, I didn't hesitate on this one because it had like- So you're doing price action. Yeah, I'm doing price action, but also like the concept of what, what's going on in the market. Yeah, and yeah. I think we were talking about this too. Like yeah. you, you do this like in your yeah. own way. I, I do it in my own way too. I, like uh -huh. I see in the day how everything is fading and then the people who are jumping on GFAIs because sure it's overextended, but it's because it's a lagger, right? It's like, it's, it's, it's coming down later. And it actually, it came down, but it didn't. So, so it, you like to form a thesis in your, in your head. A hundred percent. I was short. Like uh -huh. I, I wanted to fade GFAI. My thesis switched the moment that I saw that it was like, you know, midday and it wasn't staying heavy. Later than midday is not staying heavy. That's a bad sign. Like that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just like get out or, or size down. And I sized down first and then I got out and at a loss and that was fine. And I was like, ah, it sucks. So if you, can you sum up GFAI in a nutshell? Okay, so GF, like for example, I forgot where it started from before it started to go crazy. I know it went up to like 30 bucks. I think it came from $2, right? Yeah, so, so it's a $2 stock. It went to 30 in a period of like a week. Yes. All on the AI craze. Yeah. And I think it was like a super I low I think it flow. went to f almost 40, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it was trapping a lot of shorts. Yeah. 38. I think it was the top or something. So when you were trading it, what area was it at? 20 something, I think. Uh -huh. It was it was the day before it was at 38. So you were so you look for like percent gainers on the day. Like you, well, what so when you entered G GFAI what percent was it up over the previous day or two? Uh, I don't know. I, so you, you, what I'm saying is like, okay, so you already decided this is extended for me. I can, I can trade this now. Well, it wasn't the first day though. Like I, I, tra everybody. I traded it the first day. It was uh -huh. great, but this was not the first day. This was, this was later. Like it had done like that second breakout. I think it was like the 10 or the 11th was the breakout and it had done it. That was like a great trade on that breakout uh -huh. and it kept going up. And then the day after that is where I, where like everything kind of faded and I started fading it too. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. you know, like I, I might not be as accurate, uh, but you know, you can tell us in the comments. Yeah. That's not true, Petra was <laughs> saying it wrong. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's what I can remember yeah, yeah. guys, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so the day after is when everything started fading and I started fading it too. And, and I, yeah, and I flipped bias when it, when it didn't stay heavy. And when, I didn't even go long. I didn't go uh -huh. long right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just got out and, I, and I, let it, I let it play out as a liquidity trap. Because usually with a liquidity trap, you would cover in the exhaust, right? Like in that yeah. exhaust move where everyone's like, ah, fuck. And then it finally comes down. So I... I, I did it, you know, like I kind of got in long in the exhaust. I got out, you know, but I, I saw how like everything, like everyone was covering. It was like, it was madness, you know, that, that play. So I got in long again and I, I just kept riding it for, for a little bit. So, so how, how long um, have you been trading like, like to get to where you're at right now? Like what, how would you describe you, yourself as a trader? I started two and a half years ago. I started trading with a Thinkorswim account mm -hmm. with like a thousand dollars. And, you know, I started learning from Eduardo. Uh, I think that the first, so the funny thing is, rewind to seven years ago, I was in Bali and I was creating content for Instagram. And this is how I first get introduced to trading. I'm in, I'm in Bali, just taking photos and like creating content. I, I'm, a, I'm an actor and a singer and like I, you know, create content for, for social media, for other people and for myself. So, so this was part of that. And I was just being like, you know, like, like an influencer in the wild, you know, like, what's up guys? Dude? Yeah. And, there, and then I see, I'm like, I'm taking this video, hey, what's up, a photo, I don't know. And I see this guy there, he's like in a hammock, right? like in a hammock with a view, with a laptop, and then like he's feeding uh, uh, an elephant. This, this was the image that I was seeing. This, yeah, is, yeah. this is true. 
this is not a social media post that he posted <laughs> later. Yeah. I mean, he did post this for sure. Yeah. But this was happening. And I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. Who is this guy? You know? And I come up to him. I was like, what do you, what do you, what do you do for, what, what are you doing? What's a, cause he was part of the group. Like he was creating content too yeah. for himself. And I'm like, where's this guy? Was this Tim Sykes? This is, yes. It was really yeah, Tim Sykes. It was Sykes. Tim Sykes. Oh, but shit. I didn't know who I didn't know who Tim Sykes was. Because he does that. Yeah, he does yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know who Tim Sykes was, right? Oh shit. And I'm like, he's like, yeah, I trade stocks. I'm like, cool. So what kind of yeah. stocks? And he's like, sit down, I'll, I'll show you. And I'm like, okay. And he was like, he's like, I'm gonna cover here. So he was feeding an elephant. Yeah, he was feeding an elephant, elephant left, and then we stay talking. Like I go in instead of the elephant, right? Sitting down next to him in the hammock and then <laughs> and then he's like yeah this is what i'm doing i'm going short on this and it's like what is short oh he was shorting at that time he was shorting at oh, this, is, this was six years ago seven years ago six years yeah, ago yeah he used to short back then people don't know he doesn't talk about it now but he created the, this short seller right here because he used to short also i learned from him yeah and then he so he doesn't talk about it anymore oh though. really really and, and he doesn't he, <laughs> yeah the shorts are evil and all that oh really but he really? was shorting yeah, yeah he was shorting something and he's like, if it gets here, I'll, I'll hit uh, 30K or 25K. I was like, $1,000? So like, yeah. It's like, I'm interested. <laughs> so I, like, I was like, okay. And then after a while, if we were talking and he was explaining, it hit the level. And he's like, I'm going to cover. He's like, that was an amazing trade. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. I mean, you know, I don't know nothing yeah, about yeah. it, but 25K or 30K sound great to so me. So you filmed it. What? He was filming there. Yeah, he was filming and creating content there. So he's like, no, I have and this. And trading. Yeah, and yeah, trading. Yeah. And I was like, I have this course. And I'm like, oh, I would love to see it. It's like, yeah, what's your email? I'll send it to you. So he sends it to me. And then, you know, we stayed there in Bali for a couple of days. So I got to hang out with him. We went to like, um, like to feed the monkeys and like, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, he, he, he's, in, he's in Bali a lot. Yeah, no, and then, and then so. I posted this. I, I'm doing, doing stories for my Instagram. And I posted stories like, Yo, what up? I'm here in the in the whatever zoo or like oh no the the monkey sanctuary and and, and Tim pops in. It's like what's up, guys? And then it's like I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I finish the story. After a couple of minutes, Eduardo is like, "You're with Tim Sykes," and I'm like, <laughs> "I'm with Tim. Yeah. Tim, what do you mean, Tim Sykes? This guy, he, you know." The penny stock framework. He has this thing, and he's like, he's like yeah. a genius. He turned uh, like a thirteen thousand dollar account into eight, one, one almost two million dollars. And I'm like, shit. Okay, so I guess he what he's teaching me is for real. Uh, so, anyways, Eduardo fast after that, like soon after that, you know, he he was already learning from Tim, and he became the trader that he is yeah. now, and. Sadly, I didn't get into stocks at that time. I booked a feature film, so I started shooting that, and then I booked a TV show, and I was shooting that after, and I kind of like forgot about stocks. I was making money elsewhere. Um, and then a couple of years after, Eduardo had this group, and he was doing really well. He's like, bro, just get into it. Like, you're already, you were getting started, just get into it. So two and a half years ago, I, opened a thinkorswim account with like a thousand dollars and started trading long buy setup like long setups and you know like reversals and so, so breakouts this is like pandemic yes so Pandemics. what month do you remember november november 2020 yes oh shit. yeah they, um so this is the end of the covid mania yes and then Shortly after, in two th in, uh, a few months later, was the meme stocks. Exactly. Okay. So I didn't catch the COVID mania. I didn't catch. But you were so you you caught the meme one. Yeah, but I only had my Think or Swim account, so I couldn't really but like. Best experience, you know. I did get experience from it. I, I I saw AMC. I saw like a bunch of I saw a bunch of things, and then soon I was able to like have some extra money, and I transitioned to a Trade Zero account. Um, not a big account yet. Um, and you know, over the course of two years, I basically lost like 30 K trading 
So, um, so the experience though. So you saw the f- full on like were you paying attention every day to the AMC's and the GME and yeah. all that. See, that's experience. So people you don't people don't realize it, but like, the screen time screen time is so so important. Like for example, for me, um, I didn't trade that much back in 2016, 17, but I did see DRYS. I don't. You probably don't know any of this. Mm. DRYS is the the first short squeeze to go insane until recently right but it, w- it went from a dollar or some a dollar fifty to a hundred fifty or something Whoa. like that and everybody got squeezed on this it was an insane squeeze i saw this every day i even went i even went long like five shares at like 30 bucks and i sold at like 80. i mean like no 50, way 50, i mean like less than 100 bucks but like but, I was but like, oh, still this. still yeah, and i and i had no clue bro. right i had no right, clue right. i just like oh let me buy like five share like you know see right, what happens right. that's right. that was what i did i didn't do, there was no price action right there's right. no tape reading there's it's no, just let's see what happens there's just like let's just throw this in there yeah yeah, it, yeah. It, 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 it was stupid but um but it, it was experience and i gotta see what a short squeeze was i gotta see what what is that a thousand percent i don't know uh a big percent runner like that that squeezed everybody you know, so many people lost in that. And then also I learned about micro floats there. I think DRYS was like a super micro floats. I learned about reverse split. So DRYS kept doing reverse split after reverse split after reverse split, making the stock float lower and lower and lower and then diluting it and doing it lower and diluting it. And then now it's, it's run into the ground. So I learned about that. And I learned about sympathy plays. There was like five or six sympathy plays. Mm-hmm. And I'm just watching. And I, I threw five shares in there. And yeah, I made a 80 bucks. I don't know how much it was. Right. But um, and it, at the time, I'm like, you know, everybody, when you get a little bit of money, like, oh, yeah. But like, in hindsight, I'm like, wow. Just for me putting the skin in the game of the couple of shares, it had, it turned on something in my human brain to pay attention more. Yes. So now you have skin in the game. So now I was, I was, it's like tuition. So now I'm learning about sympathies. I learned about short squeeze. I learned about reverse split. I learned about a historic short squeeze. And then fast forward years later, I started the podcast and I interviewed Bryce Foos. He's a eight figure trader. He told me not to say that, but like, um, you know, I guess it's been a long time. I don't know if he watches the podcast, but he's like, he's probably made more than eight figures now. Um, <laughs> And uh, he, he's, he was telling me all about DRYS, like on the podcast and the interview. It's a great, I even made a clip of it. And I, when he's explaining it, this is a big trader. I'm able to, with, to bring it out of my memory bank. And I'm like, now I have a, a really awesome trader explaining something to me. And I'm able to recall it. This is like playing chess without the, with the only, without the board. It's like really cool. Like you, you can. Someone say, "Oh, I moved the pawn to e4, pawn to, rook to this," and then you're recalling, you're playing it with them. You're like, "Oh, this is sick!" Now you're recalling it. It's kind of like that. Um, so, but like, and there was another stock I was involved in the before that, KBIO. You don't know this one. The another short squeeze, massive short squeeze. You know Martin Shkreli, this guy, this hedge fund manager went to jail, got arrested. But like, I got to see that. Shit. I didn't trade it right at all. KBIO was an after hour short squeeze. Michael Good lost like a lot of money on it. Tim Sykes, I think, had a loss on it too. He shorted it. They got so I I learned about after hour short squeeze. So Martin Shkreli, what he did, there was this there was, drug. There was a recent one just now. So, um, which one? There was a few a thousand it was, percent. Runners. It was crazy. It was like it went to seventy. Just now, like a week ago or two weeks ago. I don't remember. It was. I know HKD last year. I mean, HKD was that crazy. was the Chinese what, one. What to two thousand? Two thousand five hundred. It's yeah, insane. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. But uh, I mean, DWAC. DWAC. Yeah. So that's a tr- that's a b- so that one I that one happened during the whole I don't know Pandemic. if it was mean was it mean yeah two thousand twenty one that end was twenty twenty one it was but it was the end of two thousand twenty one but that's a that's a billionaire play and I saw a billionaire play in the past I forget which one but like that's that's part of what you learn through screen time okay billionaire play you don't touch the billionaire play micro float sympathy short squeeze um you know you name it so like you know you see these things so you when you see like the amc gme zach morris all mm-hmm. these guys 
you got to see that all in real time. So in the future, you don't even know yet. You're going to be recalling that. It's true. It's true. You know? So, yeah, that counts as, as really important experience. Even though you didn't, you didn't bank on that. Though, I didn't bank that much either. No, yeah. I, so, the D-Work thing, I didn't. So, yeah, that's a billionaire place. So, like, that, even now, like, I, I, I need, you know, I'll probably long eventually. But like billionaire plays, those are those are those usually are pretty good longs. You know, D Donald yeah. Trump is a, technically a billionaire. I think he was a president at the time, right? Yeah. No, was he? I think he was. He was. He was. Yeah. He, he was. I think was his son was the one who was involved, right? No, no. With so with DWAC was he's coming up with Truth Media. Hold up. This was this 2020? No, I don't think he was president at this time. Are you are you sure? Because. 2020 time flies man we're you know it's like so fast so 2020 november wasn't that like the election and then 2021 i think he, trump wasn't president anymore so so elections no. are next year 2024 yeah so it was 2020 yeah, it's already That's crazy, already crazy man elections. crazy so yeah so trump was a billionaire and he was a former president and he's coming up with a whole new company truth media social media even though it's it's run to the ground mm -hmm. there, nothing ever came of truth is like they're going to go bankrupt or something i don't know it's yeah, not doing yeah. so well but like at the time he was pumping it and at the time i remember with covid he was he was they called him the pumper in chief that was like the, the whole <laughs> totally totally stock. yeah so so I don't know if you remember Kodak. I don't think you were. Yes, I remember. So Kodak was a billionaire. I traded player. Kodak. I you traded, traded Kodak. Kodak. Yeah, I actually profited on Kodak. Yeah. So, so what, do you recall that one at all, or? More or less, I do remember when. How did you one, trade it? How did you trade it? I mean, I went long in it. But so you, what, what, what was the reason? Did you say, "Oh, Trump's pumping it. I gotta do this"? Yeah, I think, I think, I think it was a breakout that uh -huh. that like just squeezed people, and then I I bought it. I think that I was in like. So, I wasn't where I am right now, so I think I just bought it because like we were buying it as a group in the yeah 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 like on Discord. See, I I I don't buy, but like what I'm what I if I were to buy it, this would be like my hindsight. I'm like, okay, Kodak, they actually if you look at the multi-year chart, mm -hmm. 2017 they got into crypto because crypto was hot. Now they said they were gonna do something with COVID in 2020, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then Trump jumped on the bandwagon and said okay this is america's darling is kodak that's right that's right but then but kodak in my head it's like looking back at the year it's like why would kodak go into crypto you know it's very strange they were trying to ride the hype mm -hmm. if you look at the multi-year chart uh -huh. in 2017 kodak went crazy one day and it's straight down and that's because yeah, they yeah. they put a pr saying we're getting into crypto in 2017 bitcoin was going crazy to, to twenty thousand. right so this is the way i'm reading it and then um and I'm like, okay, now Trump is on the microphone in front of the White House or something like that, saying Kodak is gonna help us do, you know, get. I forgot what it was. Respirators. Don't, don't, don't. Uh, you know, this is a. <laughs> don't. Mark don't destroy my us yeah, in yeah. the comments saying, yeah. no, you messed up. That's not what he really said. But it was something related to COVID. I think respirators or something are using their. I don't know what. But, uh, that's but my, Trump that's... was on it, and then Trump said, "This is Kodak, Kodak." You know, and, he, and I think the government had some kind of contract. So Kodak went to insane, and uh, so you, but well, you were buying it because you saw the price action. Yeah, I, I'm very price action driven. Like for instance, I mean there there are a lot of play. Like I do see the overall like the the environment mm -hmm. around around the play. For instance, um, one of the plays that I did was uh, that, that are like environment driven was uh, First Republic Bank. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when Silicon Valley Bank uh like crashes right it was on a friday yeah and then it it didn't open on monday oh, it, did you see, it, it I, got it got halted in pre-market right t1 i, I had market. tim sykes on the pod on macro driver talking about a, a silicon valley bank crash the same day no way yeah yeah no uh, way i'll show you the clip later i'll check it out so so uh -huh. so anyways like it crashes right and then i see that all the banks in pre-market are like you know people are panicking right and everything's like crashing and i and i had talked to my brother about like buying not silicon valley bank because they were in real trouble but like a different bank yeah a different bank that that crashed. That, that crashed like comerica did you see any other ones no like the, i got fixated on on first republic 
and my brother and I, uh, the one I, uh, I was telling yeah, you, he's yeah, the yeah. CEO, whatever, we're talking about uh, why First Republic was a good panic buy, like a, a good panic deep buy. You know, I just waited, you know, I waited for the open, it opened, it went to 17. I remember that I got in like just a little bit like on that, like when it started reversing, like very little, very little. And when it finally like <coughs> got above VWAP, like I got in real hard. And it just, it was my you know, best trade of the I year. I think it went to 40. Yeah, I didn't point. I didn't exit at 40, of course. Now it's at 13. I know, I know, I know. No, yeah. I think it's up again, right? 13 or 14. Yeah, yeah. I've really? been watching it, yeah, yeah, so. Oh, okay. I've been watching it because I know uh, in 2008, the banks crashed. That's right, that's you know? right. Me then, too, I've been watching it because of that. And so like, uh, and I, there's First Republic banks around here. Mm -hmm. I don't know where, where you live in, uh, but What's they're they're around LA. They're yeah, around LA. Yeah, yeah. And they're nice. They're really nice banks, and I think they're adjusting. They're trying to convince people to come back and like really doing nice, uh, extra stuff. So like, it is a good bank. It's just the price action right now doesn't reflect it. Yeah, it doesn't reflect and, the company that it is. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. The, that was that was the concept on the on the panic yeah. deep buy, and so yeah, that that was that was the play. But in I 2008, think, the same thing. So like all the banks crashed, like Bank of America. Bank of America had a, had a similar situation yeah, with, then, the, with the panic. So if it, in hindsight, if you buy it and then hold it for like 10, 20 years, you know, you, you big, huge. Right, huge. So so that was my thinking with that. I'm like, is this, uh, maybe I put some money in here for long, long And just term. let it, yeah, yeah, just yeah. letting one of the brokers. Yeah. yeah, my brother's buying First Republic Bank and mm -hmm. like a couple other banks right now. I know Comerica uh, um, crashed and I think it's back up now. But Comerica had nothing to do with the Silicon Valley. It's just because it's a regional bank. So banks that are under, I think it was like 250 million or 500 million, they were all in danger of having this kind of panic. People, the pub, you know, the crowd, you know? Yeah, Someone yeah, yeah. panics and then it's like, like my mom called me up and was like, you know, should I get money out of the bank? You know? Uh, <laughs> really, really? <laughs> yeah, having cash under the pillow. Oh, Roland Wolf, I think uh, he's going to be here, right? So like he, he posted on Twitter or something. He's, he's half Korean. I think his mom's oh. Korean, and his Korean mom uh, asked, told him she pulled money out of the bank or something and stashed it in the house. In the house, it's, yeah. He had an Instagram post or Twitter yeah. post about that. I mean, I have a I have a friend that uh, his family they have gold in the house. Uh huh. Like, yeah, like literally, like yeah, it's crazy, man. It's like, like it's heavy, man. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> I mean, I haven't held him, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he has like. My, like cash in the bank I mean, he's got uh, crypto and he's got literal gold oh, so in one, the house yeah he's one of those like spread out yeah, yeah. does he do trading at all or just um, I don't know I don't think so investing for sure yeah, but yeah, yeah. Not, not trading yeah I know a lot of people like they, they do crypto they, they follow the what's it called the CPI numbers and like you know right right right, right. all that stuff but like yeah trading is is a different animal because like you know that's one thing I like about trading too um, trading, especially small caps, it doesn't matter what the market's doing. Yeah, the you know? small caps have their own, their own thing, their own thing going. A lot of times the market is like, yeah, it's funny because um, a lot of people when they they, they know I'm, I'm day trading and they see the market all red, they're like, oh, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. The, I, I shorted so, so it. So what 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 do you, what do your friends and family think about your trading? Um, well, you your know, vision because you told me your vision for trading was like, okay, I'm gonna do acting and trade in the mornings, and I could this would be like an awesome life. So, so, so this is what happened. I, I, I had always envisioned it like that, right? Like when when I started trading and I realized the time that it was here in the West Coast, I was like, this is this is perfect. I wake up at five, study my like you know do my morning routine. I study my pre market, and then I go in from six thirty a.m. to like eight thirty a.m. Done. 9 a.m. and I already like made money, ate breakfast, walked my dog. I'm I'm good to go. I have all day. I have my whole life ahead of me every day. So just that concept is freedom. And I, I think that I, I've always personally been career driven. You know, I've always been like acting and so passionate, you know, and so that passion also is a separate note, but 
has brought a lot of like I mean I'm an actor so I have to be emotional you know so it's been a, it's been a battle of like separating those emotions well, that's true, to because like trading you gotta be very in control of your emotions and he, acting too. here too you have to be in control of your emotions but you have to have them there you know at like a click from like a tear a click from like you know really feeling whatever whatever scene is presented to you so, right so when you're trading and you're feeling an emotion how do you how do you uh, handle it? Because you're an act, you're you're a professional emotional person. Yeah. So I, how, how, does that help? No, I have a max loss that helps me. The max loss. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you take the max loss. <laughs> yeah, the max loss. Yeah. It's like, yo, go act. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually that's the message that it pops when when I hit the max loss. Go be an actor. You don't. You <laughs> traitor piece of. I'm das traitor. The message shows <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. No, no. Um, you know, it's, it's it's been a journey to like be able to master that. I I remember. I remember me like crying, like bawling my eyes out because I lost like X amount of money. I always I I also was the person who like lay down in the couch in fetal position for like two days because like I had lost <laughs> money and I but, suck but, but, and I am the worst but, but when, person when in the happens, world. But you're the one that pressed the buttons. No, no, for for sure, for sure. But at the same time, it was like, I just didn't, I didn't uh -huh. know how to handle it. I, yeah, I just yeah, didn't yeah. know. It was too emotional. And then so little, what, what, that doesn't what, happen to me anymore. What part of your training journey was that? Like the first six months, the first month, first year, first the first year. year. I don't, I, I don't even think it was the first six months because the first six months I didn't have enough money to in for account. that to happen. Yeah, yeah. Well, game. at least, at least you you didn't have that money in there so a, so good and then the the next year that's when i lost the money you know like the first six months i probably lost so like what, what made you put more money in the account well realize i was i was winning in trades so i was you, winning like, i was like okay. i was i took my one thousand dollar account my think or swim account from one thousand to like fifteen hundred wait hold oh or like like 500 bucks but like well, i yeah, was trading with like 100 bucks 100 bucks here 50 bucks here uh -huh. And then I had, uh, you know, making five bucks here, eight bucks here, twenty bucks here, and then I had fifteen hundred, and and I was but, like, but, you, but your trading was, you weren't emotional in the trades when you had that when you were winning all those trades because it was so, so was, small. Yeah, it was so small. It didn't matter, and, and that's something that I that I also believe that it should always be it like. It should that. always be like. It should yeah, always yeah, be yeah, like yeah. that. Like your life. It's something that I learned in the, in the process, and then after and then after looking back and seeing how I was trading when I had my ThinkOrSwim account. I think your lifestyle should be here, right? And then your trading losses should be way below your yeah, yeah, your yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. your trading gains should be below your uh -huh. your your lifestyle because it's a cumulative thing. It's not you can't relate. You can't depend on like one. You can't be like, okay, this is the trade. No, this is the process. This is the mindset. The mindset, the ability, the the the, the process is what's gonna make you a millionaire, make you a you know have those yeah, 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 yeah. wealthy or like uh, those traits that are gonna or or those weeks and months that are gonna create wealth instead of income. And I think that the moment that we we bring that to the same level, we're working for income. We're trading for income. We're trading for oh my god, five hundred bucks. That was that was great. You know, or to, mm -hmm. I, I, it's just weird to talk about like uh, about money because money means different things to everyone, but or amounts uh, mean different things to everyone. But uh, you know, if you're paying a two thousand dollar rent and you're in in a trade, you lose two thousand dollars, then and then you're thinking that you lost the rent money. That's just yeah. such a toxic way of like seeing so, trading you know so the way i dealt with that uh -huh. i think i think i told you right early when i the when i first got this office down here i sold my car uh-huh and like i had no expenses yeah I, so I great i remember this and i took the subway to a little tiny closet i basically lived in a closet in koreatown and i had this really this office that you see now imagine it bare walls and nothing in there but a laptop that's right. all i had and um and i think that helped me to study and have i had no expenses i had no life it sucked right but uh, i i had a vision for myself to just study and tr and learn this thing and like i knew if i added expenses 
it was going to stress me out and I wouldn't be able to trade efficiently, you know? So, so one, so one of the things that I did recently and it's mm -hmm. helped my trading tremendously. Like I, I, and, and like I told you in the last podcast, the last, the, 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 the first two years, maybe without those first six months, but the first two years in general or, or year and a half after the, the first six months, my, my curve was like, just like uh -huh, uh -huh. going down. I was like bleeding out my trading account, my bank account, everything. And but you kept coming back. Yeah, I kept so coming. You, you, so you, you, is this your type of personality? Like you're not a quitter. I never just... give up on anything. Never. You know, like I, I went through. You know, like I, when you asked me before, like what do your family think about you trading? Like. I'm an actor and a musician and a filmmaker, so I already picked the most difficult careers yeah, yeah, yeah. to break in. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. trading it just makes sense. Like my family is like, makes sense. <laughs> you know, yeah. like makes yeah, sense yeah. you pick something so so difficult because is, is, I, I love yeah, the challenge. Yeah. You know, yeah, I love like the if challenge. you're if you're like in school, in elementary or middle school, high school, and you say I want to be an actor, it's like you're gonna be, like. That's oh. like such a low odds. Oh my God, everyone made fun of me. <laughs> everyone made fun of me. And then when I was like... like I want to be a, ba a basketball player, you know? Yeah, yeah. I remember I was in the, in the I don't know, the like a big red carpet or whatever. I was, uh -huh. And I was uh, uh, hosting because I like won some awards since the, the year before. So I was hosting the year after. And it, so many people saying, telling the story of like how they met me. People that didn't like me. Uh -huh. You know, before, and I'm like, yeah, go, go, fill, <laughs> go fill your mouth with that. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. it's, it's crazy. People are not going to believe in you. You're yeah. the, you're the only one that has to though. You know, you mm -hmm. are the only one that has to. And, and I've already lifted. I've already lived being rejected for a while in something and then making it. I've already half done that multiple times in multiple careers. So I'm definitely gonna make do the same in trade. Well, you, you know, I was talking to just the other podcast before this one yesterday. I was talking to a friendly bear Discord member. Mm -hmm. We did a Q and A on Zoom, and we made it a podcast. And he's in the game for three years now. And I was like, all right, so you made it past the biggest hurdle, in my opinion, is like the, the time in the in the game, getting the screen. If you can last like two and a half, three years, yes, that's like a major hurdle. Yeah, that's the that's the yeah. Well, hopefully not down, yeah, but like. Yeah. But that, that's that's a commonality that you see from all, most successful traders. It's like that two and a half or three year mark yeah. where something clicks. I'm between two and a half and three years Because now. you've been, think about all that compounded knowledge from, from screen time, from watching the stock, from watching the, all these trends happen over and over and over. So like, you know, if you, the, the main thing is, like I tell people all the time, you got to stick around. Yeah, yeah. You know, stick it, you, you got to stick it out. So well, the thing is that like, you can't risk your account in one trade. Yeah, yeah. It's just not worth it. Not even your account. Like, for instance, I have a, I have a bigger account now, uh, like a $30,000 account. So, well, it's not at 30000 right now, but, you know, above twenty five. Yeah, yeah. So if I've hit 25000 and I've had to put money again, right? Yeah. And so twenty five is like zero. Twenty five is zero yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, because then you're under yeah, 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 yeah. twenty five. You're an, under the PDT rules, and then it sucks, yeah, right? Yeah. To trade, so um, might as well yeah do something else yeah, if you're yeah, under yeah. twenty five trading with that that, that configuration. Um, I don't know. Like right now, I I just. I look at my risk in the day and I realize that sticking around is is everything because you doesn't matter if you have one bad day, one you're going to have good days. Like it's inevitable. It's having green days is inevitable. Anyone who's not a trader yeah, yeah. can have a green day. So you're trading, you're constantly there and showing up, you're going to have green days. So if you're having a red day, that's 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 that day. It's not a TV show. It's not, you know, it's not like one episode, second episode, like they're separated. So it's just a matter of like, just not going crazy in that one day, having a max loss, having a max loss per ticker. I think that's key for me. Having a max loss per ticker in a max size. Um, like we, we, we are, we have to protect ourselves for, from, 
from Mr. Hyde, you know? Like, we're Dr. Jekyll most of the time, but when Mr. Hyde shows up, yeah, you're done, you know? You're done. If you don't have a max size, you know, you're, you're gonna go crazy because cause Mr. Hyde wants to, like, revenge trade. Mr. Hyde wants to get the money back, and that's, you know, it's just a formula for a disaster, so. So how, how do you deal with that? Max loss, max size, max loss per ticker. I think those those are Ma great protections. Max loss per ticker, is that big? So like, you just won't trade the ticker again? Is that what it means? During the day, like for the day. You know, I, if I hit X amount of money, like 300 bucks, for instance, I think, or actually I think 200 bucks is my max loss On a ticker? per ticker right now. And I think 300 bucks is in the day. Like it's just a small, it's small. Um, now when you do it per ticker, it's because you don't want to, it's like a trauma from that ticker or something. Like I think that if I in my, if I'm if I hit two hundred dollars, usually when I have a really good like trade, and 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 on a ticker, or or a couple of trades, and and I finish the day like on you know finish the day well with that ticker, I think that I can hit like five hundred, maybe six hundred bucks if I killed it. Right. Yeah. And if I did OK, but good, you know, I'll hit 300, 200 to 300 bucks. Um, so if I if I'm risking more than 200 bucks to make two, 300, you know, or I'm or, or what? I'm, I'm risking 200 bucks to the possibility of my max gain on a ticker, which is five, six hundred. I, I don't think it's worth it doesn't make sense. Uh, uh, risk reward wise if, if if the max loss is 500 for instance yeah on a ticker I'm not gonna risk 500 to maybe make 500 and to most likely make two three hundred so I know that if I'm I, my max loss per ticker is when I'm when I'm out I'm trying thirty dollars here risk forty dollars here thirty dollars again 25 30 like how many times do I have to try five times yeah, yeah. you're out dude like yeah. if you're not if you're so, so you're being really strict you have a, a short leash because like, i think that's yes. a really good way to, because like your account size is not there yet exactly your trading is is you're you're a developing trader so you you give yourself a short leash yes so what's more important to you at this moment are you trying to get gain knowledge and experience because you know that you, you know eventually it's going to work out or are you trying to make money well, I think that I, I think that I am, I'm going to, I'm going to answer, I'm going to answer what I should be doing, which is I'm trying to gain knowledge. You know, I know that that's the correct answer, but sometimes some days I'm trying to make money. And usually those days are the days that I lose the most. See, that's, that's the human side, man. The human side is greedy. Like I remember we were talking about just earlier about uh, DRYS, the squeeze that I was talking about. I threw five, uh, five shares in there and like I got the lessons even now right. I, re I can recall it I got really good lessons out of that but at that moment I wanted to make money <laughs> right I didn't want to think about lessons the David back then didn't care about the lesson I was like I need to make some money I need to make because I, I you know what's crazy I was driving uber at that time uber I would drive for a hundred dollars a day uh -huh. so when I made that 80 bucks or 60 I don't forgot what it was I was like, damn, that's like half a day of driving Uber. But you know, you know what? I'll tell you. And, and for everybody who's watching, like, I think ride sharing, Uber, like all those jobs, a lot of people look down. No, trust on me, it. I, I have a lot of stories from that. I drove, but I think, I think, yeah. I think it's actually, no, it's, great. it's actually a great job. No, for no, for the, for, for, tra for somebody trade? Tempor temporary. Oh my God. Yes. Uh, I, you know, for trading, it's crazy. There's helicopters and stuff. We're really high up here, man. <laughs> no, you guys, you don't even know because you're not looking at the window. But this, I, I look down, and then David's like, like, look down, and uh, I don't want to look down again. That's, that's how high this is. Yeah. Is it that tallest look, building? The, look at the helicopter. Look, it's like the, we're above. Oh, the we're helicopter. taller. We're, we're higher than the helicopter. This is crazy. Is yeah, this the crazy. tallest building in the uh, west of the Mississippi? What? Yeah. So the so the tallest building in the West Coast. Yeah. And yeah, the yeah. And, right here. from the or wow. right here. That's, and, uh, so this, this is goes crazy. up um, 20 more floors. So there's what? 18 more floors. So we're high, but it goes even higher. I don't think I, if I don't think I want to go higher than this. But um, I forgot what I was saying. What was I saying? Uh, you were saying. Oh, the the human this, lessons. 
or the human. We're, so we're trying to make money. Oh, yeah, the Uber thing. The Uber thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, so no, nah, man, Uber was great because yeah. you're on your... So I used to... I only drew, I drove for like, I don't know, maybe six months, maybe like five, six months. Right, right. And, you know, during that time, I drove it to pay for the Tim Sykes course. And so, I, like, all that money from the Uber came went mostly to that, and I paid a little bit of expenses after that. But I would listen to audiobooks. Mm -hmm. I would pull over on the, to a Target uh, in Westwood. You live next to Westwood. The Target over right. there. Yeah, yeah. I live because close. they would have free parking for two hours. So I'll go there for two hours and study the stocks. And then I'll turn my Uber on and then get my ticket validated, leave the Target parking. Because they had a Starbucks in the Target. So I'll go and study at the at the Starbucks. Hell yeah, dude. For two hours and then go and drive for, for a few hours and then come back, listen to audiobooks. So that was but like it just the Uber the Uber driver is just a stressful job because people are sitting in the back of your for seat, sure, they're drunk sure. and stuff. So like but um Oh, no, you're driving at night. At night. So that's when that's where the, the at the where time the money was the money was okay, more it was yeah, yeah. one point five times more. Right, right. Or something. So, but this is this is what I think though. Uh, regarded regardless if it's like Uber or whatever, I think I started um you know, I've made money from acting and like, you know, entertainment mm -hmm. and stuff and that's how I've like like kinda like fed my my trading career, right? The moment that I got a side job which is this is a recent thing for me you know like i i i usually try to just like just do my thing yeah and and i was i decided at some point when i was trading even though it was not going my curve wasn't going up but it was like kind of like mm -hmm. slowing down the 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 draining of the account it was like you could clearly see how i had days that were like way better even though I still had bad days. And I would be more horizontal, still going down, but more horizontal. And at that moment, I, I thank God I decided to get a side job. And I recently, like not, yeah, recently, like a couple months ago, I started doing branding for other people. And like using kind of like my knowledge from like, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I've, that I've gained to being in front of the camera and and also behind to just like serve other people too and like help them grow and that kind of like started making me money so i wouldn't like drain my drain my yeah, account yeah, yeah. by living and trading i think that even though i didn't need money to pay rent because I, I had enough in the account I was still losing money every month because I would pay rent, expenses, etc. So I'm losing money. But that helps relie relieve the stress of so, the. So, so for me, the curve, like in like my my bank account, everything, the curve was only gonna stop either when I booked a big acting job or when trading turned up. So I had pressure. I had pressure on my trading on turning it back up. So it wasn't like a. It wasn't. I don't think it was healthy. The moment that I got the side job, the moment that I got the side job, within weeks or within a month, my curve was completely horizontal. Like, I wouldn't lose any money. And yeah. I would actually go up and, uh, so but it, not down. And it, it does affect trading. Massive, yeah, massive. This is a massive realization that I had this year. And I just don't need them. I, 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 I'm not draining the, my bank account anymore. I'm not draining it at all. Yeah. That's so, good that you did that. So like when I, I was doing the first year that I was uh, really, I, get, I stopped doing Uber and I switched to tutoring. Tutoring great. was good and I enjoyed it too. So like, uh, and it, it paid a lot better too. So like I, to have that constant flow of money coming trading, in, it tra really Trading pressure. tutoring or, uh, or was, just tutoring? Uh, you know, I was studying trading, but I was trading like a thousand dollar account. Oh with right, PDT, which is like three day, three days every same, three trades same, every same. five days or same. something swing trades, but uh, I would do tutoring and like I would lose a little money trading because you know I was bleeding out a thousand dollars like I don't know a few bucks here, a few bucks there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but like I had this money coming in from tutoring constantly, and like it was just enough to like I'll be cool, you know. But um, but yeah. So when I started to get profitable, um. I always I was always in debt with student loans and stuff. So I, one thing I noticed when I paid down my student debt a little bit at a time or like credit card, it made me better at trading. For sure. Because like let's say 
so in 2020, for example, um, I, ma I made good money on the COVID stocks, but okay. I, I didn't want to pay my bills uh, initially. I was like, man, I have this cash now, but I was like, um, I, I wanted to pay the minimum on my bills, but to wipe it out, it takes, it's a, then all the profits just go away because it's right, just wiping right, it right. out. But then I noticed that when I paid off bills, I traded better. So yeah. I was like, I gotta, I gotta wipe this out. So then I don't have that in the back of my head at all. It just mm -hmm. disappears. So that's what, I, so even though it hurt to like, use, I was so, for so many years, I was just paying partial payments on credit cards and student loans. Uh, and then finally I have, I have some money in my bank, like from trading. And now I gotta like pay all my bills with it. Right. It was like, damn, I don't get to enjoy any of this money. But at the same time, it did relieve a lot of stress. So once I did, once I got a taste of that, I kept doing it and I just kept paying down more bills, more bills, and then minimizing my expenses. So minimize expense, pay the, pay down the debt, minimize expenses, pay down the debt. And then it freed me up to trade better. And I noticed right in my behavior be, with trading changed right away. For example, even when I made like, I don't know, I was up like 200 grand uh, and I, mo I moved to Puerto Rico for one whole year. Smart. 2021 to learn <laughs> yeah i reinvested uh some profits and wanted to further my education down there there was some days that i had like a two grand win three grand win and i'm like you know what? i'm paying down more credit cards i still had some credit card bills but i was hoarding the cash i was like what well, i need to pay down this bill so then i can trade better this is so then i would go in the conference room no one this is the first time i mentioned i'll go in the conference room at trade space and i'll call uh one of the credit card companies oh, Puerto Rico? Yeah, what's that Trade space in, in Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico? Yeah. That's cool. And then I'll just like, you know what? Just pay the whole thing. I, <laughs> it's like three or four thousand is paid off. And then I noticed that the next, when I made that payment and it went through, then the, my, my trading improved. I'm like, man, that monkey's off my back. Yeah, for sure. And my sure. trading improved. So like, and, and, I got addicted to that. And, and, and same is with bills. Like if you have bills, like if you like save, 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 and then you're a full-time trader, that's... I don't, I don't think that's, that, that's no, great. Yeah, pay down the I don't bills, think it's great. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta, yeah, save, 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 but continue to make it. Like, I think Eduardo says it in a, in a, in a, in a podcast, don't subtract avenues of income. Like, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why would you subtract avenues of income? I think you said, you said it in an Instagram reel recently. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like, yeah. add avenues of income. Like, you don't want to, you don't want to subtract. So, it's like, save, 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 quit your job, and now you're a full-time trader. It's like, you just eliminated yeah, 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 yeah. all avenues of income, and then you will see if you'll make it in trading. Your like, behavior changes. Yeah. yeah, that's not, if you see if behavior changes by what? By having more money in the account? No, because yeah. you're nervous still, you know, you're still nervous about, like, the the account going down by paying your bills with the money that you have saved, yeah. like it's still pressure, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think that's why I was saying like the Uber thing, but the Uber thing is just symbolic, you know, like it's like if you're starting out and, and you can just do Uber, like it's crazy. Do Uber. Any, anybody, do whatever you, you have like. a license, you can do it. Also. So I tr I tried them all for like a six month period. I was going hard with, with these kind of things. I, I wanted to get out of my architecture career and switch completely. So I, this is me with a master's degree in architecture. I signed up for Uber. I put my ego aside completely. For sure, for so sure. So like I was like Uber, Postmates, Grubhub, um, Lyft, uh, hand, this app called Handy, TaskRabbit, um, a couple of others, DoorDash. Uh, I signed up for all of them. They gave me, at the time they had like a bonus. So that helped. And then like, I was looking for a way to like, just make this transition and I, you need something temporary, you know, like this is perfect. So we live in a time, what, what a time we live in, man. You can do these online things. You can do yeah. podcasts. You can, um, yeah. the There's information so many for tools. trading, like you see the office, my computer and shit, like all that. If we're in 1990, that's not possible. 1991, 1992, that's or right. in the 80s, none of that. You got to be like a, a floor trader. You got to be paid like for a license. You got to like subscribe to all this data there's no computers how are you going to get a level two or whatever you know that's so right that's right it's not possible but now it is possible yeah it is i think it's just a matter of i don't know it, there's it, for, for real it's just so easy to trade in in 2023 but also there's so many there's so many jobs you know there's so many like little 
jobs that you can do to like transition from whatever life to this. Yeah. That I think I think there's no excuse, and that really leaves you to what tra- what really trading is about, which is you know mindset and in the end it's, it's mindset, you know. Mindset, discipline. It comes from mindset too. The discipline. You know, you know? Um, if you're the the right person, right? Yeah. If you're the person, the the successful trader. A successful trader mindset. is is disciplined. Yeah. A successful trader caught his losses or her losses, you know, let his or her winners run. So Yeah. Awesome. So we're gonna do another podcast of Macro Driver talking about Bish's background. So any other thoughts before we close it out? Um I don't know, guys. Uh, the market's wild. Be safe out there. Um, uh huh. So yeah, cut, cut, have a max loss. Have a max, max loss per ticker. I think yeah. those are good if you're starting out. You got to have everything on a tight leash. Yeah. Because you got to think in a in a max size too. Because uh huh. You can, like if you're going long with two thousand dollars, you can't lose more than two thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you're short. Maybe you can't, but. <laughs> Well, it's sure you gotta have, you gotta trade with a bigger account or just trade like one share. That's right. If you have a two thousand, just to test it out, just to yeah. test it out. But, yeah, um, but I do think that the the risk settings are everything when you're starting out. I think that that really, if you could, if you look at my curve and you look at like my my worst losses, and you shave all the like the because you know there there were days where I went over my max loss multiple days where I would call the broker and say take it off like like I got into a max loss take it off and, and they go, told and you go no? back and they, and what would they tell you they, they will take it up they would take oh, it up yeah, yeah. and then I would go back and get into a bigger loss 80% of the times literally literally 83% of the times I would get into a bigger loss uh, than, than, than fix my, my day and so so I stopped doing that and by doing that my curve already Got yeah. better so like there's like a lot of technical ways to fix a lot of your curve you know like i think with risk settings you will fix a lot of it mm-hmm. and and like i said if you shave all my losses after my max loss my my curve doesn't look like it does yeah you know the, the, like i would be there's always a common denominator to like most of the let's say uh, like a, uh, a number of like I know, like my biggest losses have a common denominator of like me adding with multiple accounts. So I stopped, or on Fridays. I remember the big for one whole year or two years, my biggest losses came on Fridays. So I was like, man, just no more Fridays. Or, you know, I, I was telling you like, um, if a loss is over twenty thousand dollars for me, is it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a really outlier loss. So like I stopped, no more. If it's twenty, is like my max, max, max. If it goes over twenty now, we're, we're, it's an outlier for sure. Um, even tw- even over ten is like wait, is something weird is going on? But like for sure. But uh, but I think it's realizing it's a common denominator. Yeah, I think it's realizing what is the number? What is that number? Where it's like it's like a it's like a risk on a chart. Like mm-hmm. I think you you set up your risk where where your theory is is not working anymore. You yeah. know, I think that's that that's what I do at least. Instead of setting it up on like a, you know, like if it goes below this level, it it, it the chart is not or the play is not what I what I thought it was gonna be. It's, it's, it's yeah, a different yeah. thing. It changed. So so that's the thing. So like that for, for my trading especially, that's what I uh, that's one of the big things. So like it, I always ask myself, is the thesis intact? Is the exactly thesis, if its thesis is not intact, then like I gotta stop adding. This is a loser. I gotta look to cut it. I gotta look to get out of this ASAP. So the same same thing with your personal losses in the day. Like you go in the day thinking that you're going to, not to trade, but to extract money from the market because that's that's our job, right? Not to trade, mm-hmm. but to get money out of the market. So if you're one thousand, two thousand, three thousand down, whatever, whatever. I don't know what the number is for each person. You're saying after ten k is weird. So it's that like. You're, I think that you set up your max loss, or me, I set it up where, where it's weird. Like, why, like, no green day of mine, I was, like, none of my $500 yes. days, I was 200 down. Never. 
Never. Yeah, no, that's the same thing with you know me. What like, I'm if, if, uh, well, actually, if it's if it's below five five thousand unrealized, I don't think I I have green days. Exactly. So at that moment, there's a moment I set up two moments. Yeah, this is the really slow good. down yeah. moment. Like when I hit a hundred bucks loss, I slow down. So I take my my size to half. Mm -hmm. And if I get back like to like fifty or whatever, like I go back to normal like minus 50 or whatever, go back to normal. But if I keep going down, I keep my size down and I start, you know, start figuring out how to, like when, when I should stop, right? And if I hit 200, well, the broker will take me out. Have you ever had uh, days where, and we'll start to wrap it up, so days where you, you, you dug yourself out of a hole with like good trading? Yeah, I have, I have. I, I, maybe, I not such a, not, maybe not a big hole. I have, I you, have, you, even a big hole. Even a big hole. Yeah, I think I was like. What do you, what do you think? Uh, I was like three k down on a day that I lost it because that's not like that's, so what, that's definitely not a loss that I can handle, and I ended up two hundred dollars up. Now, uh, how long ago was that? It was eight months ago. Eight months ago. So, did you? Was it okay? I don't want to say gambler because like gambler is like not what we go for. But like, was your mindset like I got to get this money back, or was your mindset all right? I. I'm down 3K, I did my risk management well, um, or maybe not well, because it's 3,000. It, it was way, like my max loss was at 300, and I, and I got out of, oh, so it was, it was, was, was undisciplined. But then, Very okay, disciplined. So then, so then, okay, so you, you were undisciplined with the loss, but then to get back, did, were you able to get back on the horse saddle and be like, all right, we're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do good trading from now, or were you? I, I or, went for a walk, I went for a walk, I like, yelled i don't know and then i came back and the, it was a very volatile day there were a lot of things going on so that's why i mean it, it, there were a are, bunch are, of are you proud of the way you got back no, no i mean i did did a really good trade you know had a really good trade it was like a re i mean it was a re like a sub b web trap yeah yeah, yeah yeah i'll never forget about this it was a sub b web trap and i got in there and when it did the reclaim I added so hard and it went to high of the day and it broke out. Like it kept going. So I got really lucky, you know? So I got really lucky so that I caught. Do you think that was like sick trading or was it like undisciplined because you were trying to make that money back? It was undisciplined. That's okay. that's that's yeah. that's not that's not great, you yeah, know? Yeah. Like like, like what would happen if if it, if the sub B web trap would have crashed, yeah. you know? Like, like for that, example, could, that was the other option. The reason why I'm asking is because like there are some days where I'm red on the on the ticker, but it was still a, it was pretty good trading. But then I, I I'm at the point now where like I can I'm, I just get laser focus and then just trade my, my setups. And if I see one good one an A setup, I'll hit it. And then like now it's a uh, you know I put the the bad trade behind me and uh, not the bad trade the red trade behind me. Well, I think that you're at a point where you're like systematically risking more or less the same. Am I wrong? Um, on 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 each trade more or less like there's a range do more, you get out of the range like crazy on some trades so no I, I i have a setup versus b versus c exactly so i'll have different size for each one okay and if if i see a stock hanging around like a uh, support level or v or or showing with the volume around vwap i'll size down so like uh, my exposure will be less but then i will be looking to add if the thesis is intact it's just if a stock is about a squeeze, but that's part of the thesis, like, okay, this is the news flow, everything aligns, but like, I see the short sellers forming in one area, it's getting overshorted and it's a, the hot chick of the day. And like, mm -hmm. it's the only, it's the top percent gainers, everybody's eyeballs on it. Like, I know it's going to burst, but I know uh, it has dilution. The float is this, the news is this. So I'll, like, I'll size down. I do think it's going to fade, you know, but it, at that moment, it's pro it might squeeze. Right. So I'll size down so then I can have space to add. Because let's say my max size right now is 10,000 shares. So let's say in that situation, I'll size down to 1,500 shares, all the way down to 1,500. That's, right. And then I'll have 8,500 8, to potentially add. Now, if it squeezes, now I'm not going to just add as it's squeezing. Right. I wait for... I wait for it to kind of like like show you like a one minute where is it having yeah. difficulties yeah, or yeah, whatever. yeah and yeah. then i'll add i'll add some there and then if it squeezes some more i'll add or and it depends on, on like uh where i'm at with the 
total size number of shares. Mm -hmm. So let's say it does one more squeeze and I add a uh, 2,000 shares. Now I'm 3,500 shares. And then it squeezes a little more and I'll sprinkle in maybe 500. But then I'll wait to see what it's gonna do before I add the rest. And then like I'll wait for the backside and maybe I'll sprinkle in some in the backside. But like, you know, so that's the way I go with size. But like, I don't have like, okay, this is 10,000, this is 10,000, this is 5,000 plus 5,000. It's not that simple. Like I'm, I'm constantly rotating shares. Right, you I know? see it. So ro rotating shares in and out, in and out. And this is all short. So, and then when I was telling you downstairs too, um, when, when I get those flushes, those stretchy candles, I'll cover. You can, yeah, right. And I'll cover you completely. You fully cover. Yeah, fully cover. It's like me taking a breather and say, okay, is this thing bouncing? And I'm flat. So like when I'm flat, I'm able to think clearly. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna take that, I'm gonna take that advice from so you. There, there's, there's multiple, so like, I wanna be, I've noticed this with myself the past year or so. Like I get really clear and focused when I'm flat. I think everybody thinks clearly when they're outside. When you have, you have like no bias, you're like, okay. So when I'm flat, when I cover it like that, I'm like, laser focus one more time because like when you're in the trade like you were showing me downstairs adtx you're like oh, okay look it's in my fate and i'm like that's everybody's bias we all think these stocks are that's right fade. that's right but and especially when you're in the trade you're looking for it to fade so you can you can make some money so like but when you're flat you can kind of see oh man this thing might squeeze you got to see it clearly so when i'm constantly covering in those long candles I noticed like from a lot of journaling for myself, because you really can't, I don't think you can track that. You can't track every single bounce that a stock does. Yeah. When it, you can track the beginning of the day, the end of the day, maybe per hour, nine, 10 o'clock, but every single little bounce of the minute candles, you can't. Yeah. Now, however, when you journal and you're like, you look at your trades and you're like, man, if this keeps happening to me, you know, like, I have one or two thousand dollars unrealized and then it goes against me and then eventually the late day it happens but like why would you so like i've been through that roller coaster ride so many times and i'm like if i get a thousand dollars or a, a flush candle i'll take it and i'll reassess and i'll do it again mm -hmm. you know because like stocks don't just and i see i think eduardo does something like he recycles shares so many times he like, does he does he's, he take, he's taking all that liquidity or like he's taking advantage of all that liquidity. So like, like he's keeping a core position for the move uh -huh. wherever it goes, but he's trading around that core, uh -huh. you know, like a, like around those channels that form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's profiting. He's profiting. They're actually and, and making uh, ECN fees and stuff. A hundred percent. Yeah. A lot of times those those uh, cores give him over fifty percent of his gains in his trade, yeah. which is crazy to me. So. I wouldn't say I trade like that, but I am in a way because I'm recycling shares just at a lesser rate. Right. Just, I like those flush candles. But and you, you, but you did kind of like when I saw that trade, I was it's kind of like that. You're just is. exiting completely, but at the same time you're going back in. So. And and you know this is the way I'm trading now, but like you're always improving. So like, you know maybe in the future I feel comfortable letting it ride out. Like we were discussing this before, you know. Yeah. So like maybe you leave a core a in there to play yeah. out. Yeah. So, but at the moment I'm I'm just like this is working for me, mm -hmm. and you know and like but you're constantly tweaking it and because it, like it's it's a when I do that when I cover at the flush, it is a behavior thing for me. It's like okay I'm out of the trade. I realize the gain. Let me reassess. Now I'm a clear focus minded. Because like if you're being tr taken on that roller coaster ride, it's different. Unless you're a systematic trader, you just boom and then boom and then you set your risk and that's it. And that's done, right? yeah. So there's just so many ways to trade, you know? So yeah. this has worked for me very well the past couple of years. How long have you been trading? So I got in the market with the, the whole Uber and all that stuff, whatever. It was 2016, end of 2016. But I wasn't really dedicating time. It's like a right. little studying here, a little studying there. I was tired. I, you know, it's like going to the gym. Like there's very few people that go every day 
for five hours or six hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You say you're gonna go, and then by the time you go home, you change, you get tired, you lay on the bed, you're like, you, you, you know, this was me the first couple of years. Right. You know, I'll go go to work, do every all these odd jobs, tutoring, whatever, and then I, I'm opening the book to study the trading or whatever, and I get tired. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bed, man. I'm I'm just exhausted. I gotta go right. to work in the morning. Right. So. So I didn't, so when I, I would say, so that was 2016 to 2020. Then 2020 in May, I was, no, actually no, January 2020, this is before COVID, like a month before. Okay. That's when I, I, I dedicated to trading like, like it was my life. Right. That was my life as far as like I put in time to study. Mm-hmm. I was looking at all the webinars. I was looking at, you know, it's like, so... I don't know how, how to count that, you know? So, like, maybe 2020 to now, that's three years. For sure, that's three years. But then before, I would say, like, one year from 2016 right. to 20, I would say if you aggregate it all, it's probably, like, the 300 days. Right, right, So maybe right. four years. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. long way to go. Long but, yeah, this is, um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll stop it here. And, yeah, well, thanks for tuning in. And we're, me and Pisha, we're going to do some more of these. You know, we're both in L.A., so why not? Yeah, so, why not? 